Hello there and welcome. In this video I got 10 tips and tricks for a good start in Songs of Six that I think that are really worth knowing about. These are being recorded in version 65. While I'm recording this it's still an opt-in beta so you need to go into the Steam properties and opt into it or it might be already officially released while you're watching this so it won't be necessary. Either way these strategies also work for all the uh, previous versions but the technical details are tailored to the most actual version so that's that and I really hope that this will help you out I really think with these things you should be able to get yourself a few milestones up ahead that will help you to make your city prosperous and successful all right let's get started with the first thing on my list I want to go over a few things to produce food early on that are reliable early game food is one of the most vicious things that many people I heard are failing at, so let's get started with that first. Aquaculture provides a fishery. Fisheries are cool because they only require timber that can be easily acquired. The other easy food source is the hunter, but that requires furniture, so you need to produce that first. And you can also acquire food by foraging. That allows you to just zoom out here and you see where the stuff is growing at. But mind you that this stuff is only growing once per year, just like at farms. And there's also pastures. Every city starts with some livestock that you require as a starting good for a pasture. And an Entelodon pasture provides meat quite quickly and it also requires just wood. So my personal tip here is start with pasture, fisher, foraging and then work yourself towards the first pieces of furniture and get a hunter uh, going. Farming is a little bit of a noob trap in this game as it is really powerful. You will sustain entire cities out of farming but in the early game the farms have the problem that you need to tend them for the entire year. You get once per year a big income and then you have to work again for the rest of the year. But this game is pretty brutal in terms of spoiling that means the fruit that you harvest this day will be spoiling quite soon. As you see here, the base rate of spoilage is 80%, for vegetables only 70%, but that means you cannot store that stuff for the entirety of the year at the beginning of the game. It will just go bad. So it's way more valuable to have these sources of income that give you a daily stuff. Fisheries give you daily income. The hunter gives you a daily income. The pastures give you also a very uh, steady income. So therefore, these are very reliable early game meat uh, food sources <laughs> and are really good. You can always go later down the road for, in terms of husbandry, for auroch for leather production or onx for cotton production if you're into that. But these are the most reliable early game food suppliers. Let's move over to number two. And that's furniture. I dedicate an entire point on this list to furniture because it's the most vicious early game bottleneck that I know about. Carpenters produce furniture, so these should be in my book the first crafting workshops that you should be building as these guys produce something that is literally needed everywhere. Your first hunter's workshop will require it, but so many other buildings will require carpentry that the earlier you get yourself a carpenter going, the better. It's up to you if you want to build a really small workshop that you can set up quickly, or a large room that you gear out uh, consecutively with new um, workbenches, or you build a small one and then you build a large one later. Either way, a carpenter should be installed in your city as soon as possible, as the production of that stuff is so darned important. As another little thing in between, the felling of trees in this game is never permanent. If you cut trees like that, they will always regrow, so you can't get yourself the lumber you need for your early game furniture production like that, and many of my cities never have a lot of woodcutters. I do that manually as it is quite powerful. Okay, enough about furniture, you know about it now, you should get it started with it as early as you can. That's the gist of it. Let's move on to number three, I want to talk about trading. Once you have 40 people in your city, you unlock the export and import depots. In previous versions, you have these right from the get-go. With version 65, it is locked behind a couple of populations. So, you will find these buildings in the logistics menu, somewhere like that, and the export depot allows you to click here 
and define what kind of stuff you want to sell. That meter defines how much of it you want to sell. And basically, as a rule of thumb, if your production is topping off your warehouse capacity, you should totally start exporting it because it's only going to spoil. And if you just sell overproduction for your city, you will already start earning yourself some money, but it won't happen without the export depots. Also keep in mind that they will need workers, unlike the import depots, where the workers will be provided from the people that you buy from. So an export depot always need, needs workers, otherwise it won't work. Many a times I have been wondering why I didn't export. That's been almost always the reason. On the import side though, you should always try to import the stuff that you require early on. Often you won't be able to get yourself clay early on, pottery is also a uh, common suspect in the early game, or is also being imported quite a lot early on alongside many other games. Don't hesitate to import whatever you need, it is really a good way to um, get yourself going, and many a times you will be better off buying stuff than producing it yourself, especially for example, Cretonians are really bad at producing carpentry. They are, as a matter of fact, even better off buying it. That just as a side note. If you're looking for things to sell early on, I can strongly recommend felling trees and clearing rocks and selling rock and wood as materials just right from the get-go. Just keep in mind with that, the market economy, the market simulation here is realistic. So if you keep flooding the market with wood year after year, the prices will eventually plummet. As a rule of thumb, the more sophisticated the good, the more steady the price. So if you keep exporting jewelry, it'll take a darn long time and a darn uh, high amount of jewelry to effectively destroy the prices. Whereas with wood, it's really not hard to get to the point where you won't be earning effectively any money for it anymore. That being said, let's move on over to number four. I want to talk about services. When you right click your uh, population, a certain species there, you have the services menu. I really want to showcase this one as it is one powerhouse of a tool. It shows you how happy the people are with the current services. It's also a readout of what you should build in your city. The rule of thumb here is if any service falls below 60 to 50 percent, you need more buildings of these. If some services are not working, like the taverns here, and the buildings are present, check if the ammo is present. Fuel, booze, and uh, food might be not sufficiently supplied there. Either way, with this screen, you can always check out what kind of things your citizens want. Generally, try to spread your service over the city while you're expanding. Janitors are absolutely vital to your city's um, success, as degradation lowers the, um, the effectiveness of your buildings and therefore your industries will start crumbling. It's super important that your buildings are all in the, if in, in the grid of a janitor, the blue stuff there. And whenever that is gone, you should build the next janitor, and so on and so forth. They also will need the resources the buildings are being made of. So if you build something out of furniture, you will need furniture to repair it. If you build something out of metal, you will require metal to repair it. Keep that in your mind when you are importing things to build buildings. You should always keep something imported for the repairs, otherwise the degradation will set in. And I don't know if the bug has been already resolved in previous versions. If one item was missing from the janitor, he was completely completely frozen and not repairing anything he would have been able to repair. So really, take care of the materials. I hope this book has been resolved yet, but it has been around for a darn long time. Otherwise, services are really important. I recommend spreading out hearths and wells all over the city, as winter will kill people without a hearth, and summer will kill people without a well. They will stroll to water if they are in the vicinity of it, but summer can be quite vicious, and these two things are the most basic things that will make your city more survivable. All the other services, expand them as you are capable of, as they will make your city happier, and use this menu here to find out what your people want. Another 
fun side note here, when a building is upgraded, it will be fulfilling the need for that specific service better. So in the case of the markets here, you won't be able to fulfill market need over 70% before upgrading these. Upgrading is mandatory to fulfill these bars to 100%. So if your services are frozen on a 70% mark, like here, that might be only showcasing that you need to upgrade your buildings. Number five, let's talk technology. Laboratories are available to you earlier than the trade is, and they are the source of many different um, things that you will need to be more successful in the game. A laboratory requires furniture, here we have the early game bottleneck again, and it binds people like forever. Research in this game does decay. That means a researcher a earns the research points and then they will be lost. So he needs to work constantly to replenish them. That means, unlike other areas in the game, people that are bound in a laboratory should never be extracted from there. You can always extract people from workshops or whatnot, but don't do that to the laboratories. Technology also must always be in the vicinity of janitors. I super strongly recommend that because we are we have here again the deterioration problem. And with technology, it's twice vicious as once you have a deteriorated lab, it produces less tech points. And when your tech points go negative, you start losing technologies. And that can be a disastrous spiral. Here are a couple of things that I want to mention. There are cheap technologies, medium technologies and costy technologies. Try to go for the cheap technologies first. These are all between 100 and 250 points of tech. These are meant to be used before you proceed further. Once you have unlocked pretty much all of these techs that you want to use that are in this price vicinity, you can go for the first laboratory upgrade costing 1,200 tech. This will allow you to upgrade your laboratories, which will make them churn out more technology points. This will require metal to be performed, and this will allow you to go into the medium cost buildings, which are stuff like here, the uh, taverns, uh, no, sorry, here, fine dining, costing 750. These buildings range between 500 and 1,500 points of tech. These are now the stuff that you can go for. At this point, it's much better to build more laboratories than going for the next tech. So roughly, you need like a, a, well, let me calculate real quick. You need something around 20 to 25,000 tech points in total before this tech starts to pay off again. Otherwise, it's wor you're worse off in terms of costs. Either way, technology allows you to unlock more services, more technologies, more industries, so it's very, very valuable, but you now know the rules around it. And as a rule of thumb, the technologies that unlock new services, they provide more citizens, and the technologies that unlock new industries, they provide a use for those citizens. Therefore, you should always try to get more people into the city and then provide new workshops, because workshops are without any value, without workers. Number six, I want to talk about the environment menu here. Every species loves different things. And here you can find out what you need to build to make people happier. So for example, Cretonians love lighting. So you can build lamps. There are here in the construction menu and the decorations, many of things that make your city shinier. Benches are pretty uh, popular among the Cretonians. Torches provide lighting. The trees spread harmony. Very good for Cretonians. Statues and pillars spread all. Very, very um, popular amongst humans and Dondorians. The environment menu will give you information about what you got to build to make your, your citizens happy by just having it built. This is a very nice way of luring more people into the uh, city as you are expanding early on. As you also see, there are really different things. Some cultures love more soldiers. They love to have a lot of rations in their storage. These guys want more benches. If we go for the Dondorians, they prefer to have less noise and they want Scythalon all stored. There's plenty of things. Check out the environment area. This provides you 
ways to make your citizens happy by just building a certain way or building a certain thing. Really powerful and can help you, especially early on when you're lacking workers and you can't build any further services because, you know, a service building like the speaker requires workers, but you don't have workers. So that's where you can help yourself out with. Number seven, I want to talk about housing and the access menu here. Housing, you might already be familiar with it. People need to live somewhere and they love to live where they work. Little story, very easy, very short. In this game, we find housing here in different sizes. There is no more privacy menu. If you are for coming from previous versions, privacy is no longer a stat. They are not that uh, interested here, as far as I know, at least. What's really important is in this menu, you can give your people access to certain furniture items. Every species love differ loves different things. The Cretonians love to put clay into their housing. The Dondorians don't like that. They prefer to even get themselves some cut stone into their houses. Either way, for every pip you put this up, you allow your citizens to pick up things and furnish their houses with. You see here how many pieces of that good would be necessary to fulfill that bar entirely, here 4,200-ish, and that stuff also gets consumed every year. That means you need to provide these things constantly, but it provides also a ways and means to make your people happier, and they'll upgrade their houses as well. And as you see here, there's early game goals, mid game goals, and late game goals as well as Gemstones are really something that uh, that's pretty hard to acquire as a civil and war and so on. Jewelry for the humans. But either way, this is another little meter that you can use to make people a tad bit happier about their living circumstances. Number eight, don't try to do everything in one city. There's more industries than you can put meaningful into one city. Most likely, you should or will focus around one species mainly, unless you're playing a specific uh, run or something like that. So you will always notice that, for example, the Cretonians are just worse at certain things. Down here, you see they are bad at all these crafting businesses. While it is absolutely a viable strategy to hire yourself some other people, like the Dondorians, to get that work done, it will be never possible to do everything on one map. For example, here, I just don't have uh, deposits of clay and ore and such that are worth um, being uh, built mines upon. If you check it out, these ore mines here have a density of 19%. This will make a horrible mine, and therefore I'm way better off in importing that stuff. And this is true for pretty much every map. Every map has strengths and weaknesses, and you should not try to get everything done in one map. Your city will be much more magnificent if you focus on the strengths of your environment and those things. So, for example, if you have a lot of fertile soil, go for the Cretonians and just export that food and buy everything else from that point on. There's a lot of different strategies that you can go for. Number nine expand carefully. With this game, you should always keep an eye out on your food clock. The production versus the consumption rate, as you see here, we're currently negative, is something you should always pay attention to. If there's no more food, people will go crazy, they will go rioting, they will destroy services, then after the riot, they will discover that without the services, the city sucks, then they will be even more unhappy, then will go rioting again and destroy even more, until your city is on the ashes and ruins, until it spirals back onto a stable situation when like 80% of the people are dead. That is really horrible, and therefore it's really good to expand carefully. Whatever you do, produce food, more and more and, and, and more than you need. Check out that the services that you require are out there. Like I said before, when you expand, check out that the janitors are there, that the hearths are there, and the wells are there. All the other services can actually wait. They will only make the people a tad bit grumpy, but nothing makes people grumpier than people dying. That being said also, 
always have graves available when people die. You should try to get yourself graveyards as quick as possible, but in a pinch, a mass grave is better than having people rot on the streets. That is really, really bad news, so that should always be provided. All the other services are icing on the cake, but you should always try to provide the things to keep the people alive, because when people start dying, start, stuff starts spiraling out of control quite quickly. And number 10, as the last thing on the list, I want to talk about nobles. They are currently, well, I'm not really fleshed out. There's a lot of work in progress here, but the gist of it is here. With the ranks that you increase, you will unlock nobilities. And these guys work like that. You just select some person here, then you click that button, and then you can select what kind of nobleman's title you want to give them. They power up the industries like here, the master of farms powers up the farms, now, there's a master of the feast powering up breweries, and there's a specialist for each and every industry. Noblemen don't need anything except for being assigned. They will be homeless because they will need chambers to uh, be accommodated, but up until something changes, they will still power up the industries even if they don't have chambers. But if you want to be a real buddy, just import yourself a couple of gemstone and uh, just buy, just build those. Either way, nobles are dirty cheap and quickly implemented. Currently, they don't require anything, but I don't expect that to stay this way in the full release of the game. But up until now, it is a really nice thing to apply, as it seriously only requires you two clicks once you have unlocked the nobleman's slot, and you can power up a key industry of your city, which will help you a lot. That all being said, I will end this list here. Thanks a lot for watching. I want you to leave some comments if you have questions or if you want to ask something away. I'm all ears. Leave a thumbs up if you considered this video uh, nice and... Uh, nice to watch and all. <laughs> Loss of words all of a sudden. And feel free to subscribe, of course. I'd be really delighted if you did so. There's also a description box below leading to various different links of mine, also the Discord of mine. I'd be really happy to have you guys there as well. And there's also links to Patreon, PayPal, and Buy Me A Coffee. I'd be really, really happy if you'd give them a look as they are the best ways and means of supporting the channel. Then there's also currently new a channel membership thingy where you can have early access to the videos. I will always release things daily and there will be never ever any paywalled content but if you want to support me via this you can just watch the stuff that i have scheduled a little bit earlier than the other people and can but that that's pretty much all but all of my content will be always free available so don't mistake that channel membership thingy there all right enough ads thanks for being around thanks for still watching this video and i hope you will have a good time with songs of six see you there